الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد all praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his family, his companions, and his followers until the day of judgment. I bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship, and Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his last and final messenger. My dear brothers and sisters, and Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam told us about those successful ones, those who will achieve success in the dunya and the akhir, those who will achieve al-falah, those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make them achieve al-jannah and make the dunya come to them. And among their qualities, that when they wake up in the morning, the akhirah is their main concern. Al-mu'min always live his life while he or she, their eyes on the prize, their eyes on the end, their eyes on the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have prepared for them, waiting and looking forward for that moment when they meet Allah, when they enter al-Jannah. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu arda, upon his death said, أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ غَالِيَةَ أَلَا إِنَّ سِلْعَةَ اللَّهِ الْجَنَّةِ فَشَمِّرُوا لَهَا Work hard for al-jannah. It is the thing that Allah have promised us and offer us. So work hard for it. And after that, a young man came to visit him. Then he said, he, this man was a young and, and petite. قليل يعني رجل قليل الجسم أبو هريرة told him and he looked at his small feet وقال له يا بني إنك لن تعدم لقدميك هاتين الصغيرتين مكانا في جنة عرضها كعرض السماوات والأرض he said I can see a plenty of space for your little feet in a jannah as big as the heavens and earth. Don't miss out. Rib'i ibn Amr in the battle of Al-Qadisiyah, when he was stabbed from the back and he saw the spear, the head of the spear coming out of from his chest, 
and the blood was gushing, a very brutal kill. And he put his hand on his face and he said, Fiztu wa Rabbil Ka'ba. Fiztu wa Rabbil Ka'ba. I won. I won. Bilal, upon his death, he said, Ghadan nara al ahibba Muhammadan wa sahba. Ikhnuq ya mawta. Ya mawtu. He said, Come death. Marhaban bik. Welcome. Someone I'm waiting for. Tonight, I will be with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his companions. And this something that is so important for us as a believer. Because one of the most important quality of the believers, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ They believe in Allah and almost combined with that, believing in the day of judgment. Believing in the akhirah. Believing in the day when we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I was thinking today about the first moment when we walk into Al Jannah. Have you ever thought about that moment? The first moment when you pass that gate of Jannah, the gate of Jannah, when you put your feet inside. Qil Imam Ahmad, Meta yajid al abd ta'am al raha. When you will feel relieved and, and relaxed. He said, when you put your first feet in Jannah. First foot, when you put your foot in, in Jannah, that's where you will feel relaxed. When you just walk in the first moment in Jannah, you will be definitely impressed, surprised by how colorful is this. The water, afnan, afnan yani ish, alwan, is so colorful. And it is filled with greenery, filled with gardens, filled with rivers, filled with fruits, filled with birds and, and other animals, filled with, you know, houses and palaces and, and, and areas made of gold and pearls and silvers. You know, even the, the land that you walk into, it's like silk. Everywhere there is a place where you can rest. But that's not only the most impressive thing. When you walk into Jannah for the first moment, can you imagine when you meet those loved ones that you have been separated from by death for a long time? When the son will finally meet his beloved mom, mother, who passed away a long time ago. The father that he long time ago died. The old man when he sees his daughters, his children. When you see the child that you never ever had the chance to see them growing in front of your eyes. Because he died before they grow up. Or they died before they grow up. When you see the sick one healed. When you see the sad persons happy. When you see the worries disappeared from the face of the people. When you see people and you don't see in their eyes worries about sickness, poverty. When you see people, they don't think about any need. They don't think about tomorrow, nor they are worried about the future or think about the past. When you see the old man come back to be young, and when you see the old woman, a young beautiful woman again, can you imagine when you walk to Jannah and you saw those, those relatives of yours, Ahlul Jannah in the age of 33? And they look so beautiful, so young. Men in Jannah, even in Nabi Sallallahu told us, يدخلون الجنة يكون الرجال فيها ثط يعني الرجل فيها ثط يعني لا شعر لا have no beard. Very, يعني their, their face smooth. Looks so beautiful. 
the most beautiful look, which is the look of Adam alayhi salam. And when you walk into Jannah, and you see the prophets and the messengers, over there Adam, and over there Musa and Isa, and right just passing by you, Dawu Sulaiman. Can you imagine just that ability, just the thought about it? When you recognize the great men and women in history, that was Salah al-Din that they talk about. That was Sheikh al-Islam bin Taymiyyah. And that's al-Bukhari. And that's Malik wa Shafi wa Ahmed wa Abu Hanifa. Once I was saying this to somebody, he said, Sheikh, how would you know that they will be there? I said, if, if you're going to be there, they're going to be there for sure. <laughs> if, if you think yourself being there, I can guarantee you they will be there, inshallah. <laughs> when you see this beautiful man, and it will be said this Abu Bakr, and the one who's walking and approaching is Umar. And the one sitting right there is Uthman radiallahu anh. Can you just imagine that? And the one above that hill is Khalid ibn al-Walid. And you hear this beautiful voice of recitation. And it will be said, that's the voice of Dawood. With the beautiful voice that Allah prays in the Quran. And another beautiful voice that the Adhan of Bilal radiallahu an. When you see Ashab al-Ukhdud, or Mu'min Ali Fir'aun, and the young men of Al-Kahf, and the people who ride the ark with Nuh alayhi salam, and you see the Mu'min Ali Yaseen, and you see the Al-Qarnayn. Can you imagine in Jannah when Abu Huraira narrate to you, and Ibn Abbas give the tafsir. And Ibn Mas'ud narrate to you the seerah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was said that in nas fil jannah yatafakkahun. Among the joy in jannah that they recite Surah Maryam. These things became in Jannah a form of reward, not a form of act of worship and obligation that they do. They do it out of joy. And with all this, you see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you meet him, and you listen to him. Bi'abi wa ummihi wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on the top of all that, can you imagine the moment when you meet Allah? When you talk to Allah? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to look at him and he removed the veil that covered his, his beautiful face, the Almighty Subhan. And he allowed people to look at his beautiful face. And at that moment, the people of Jannah will never be given anything more enjoying, more rewarding more beloved to their hearts than looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine yourself among those who Allah will tell them at that moment, أَحْلَلْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ رِضْوَانِي فَلَا أَسْخَطُ عَلَيْكُمْ أَبَدًا Can you imagine that you are in that moment hearing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say to the people of Jannah, قَدْ رَضِيْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ I'm pleased with you. Can you imagine that that moment when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to you and the angel, وَكَانَ سَعْيُكُمْ مَشْكُورًا I appreciate all the effort that you have put in this dunya. سَلَامٌ قَوْلًا مِّنْ رَبِّ الرَّحِيمٌ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you salam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, As-salamu alaykum, then you say, Allahumma anta as-salam, wa minka as-salam, fahiyyina rabbana bis-salam. يَا لَذَّةَ الْأَسْمَاعِ إِذْ هِيَ سَمِعَتْ وَيَا لَذَّةَ الْأَبْصَارِ إِنْ هِيَ أَبْصَرَتْ What a great joy for your ear and for your eyes if it will be able to hear and to seize that. What a great joy for us to witness that moment. That just the first, I just 
few minutes and minutes and hours and days means nothing in Jannah. There's no concept of time. لا عمل ولا تكليف فرغ من الحساب There is no more obligations, there is no more wajibat, there is no more rules. You know, not only that, there is no more hypocrisy. There is no, there is no more hate. There is no more envy. There is no more jealousy. There is no more wars. There is no more killing. There is no more sickness. There is no more poverty. There is no more worries. There is no more anxiety. There is no more medications. There is no more, you know, uh, 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 insulting. There is no more tiredness. There is no more for boring. There is no more of all this. All this is just a pure joy in Jannah. That's something should not be missed. ليس بعاقل من يبيع لذة العمر بشهوة ساعة. It's impossible to tell me that there is any wise person will give up a joy like this just because this person wants to fulfill a short temporary loss in this dunya. If some of us will offer, what about I give you a, ever, a, a lasting good home made of wood? but it will last you and protect you. Or I give you a house made of gold, but in any time can fall on you. In any time it can collapse. What a wise person will do? Will ever choose that? No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala offer, offering us a house made of gold that will last forever and give us houses made of woods that can collapse at any time. Yet, we choose the wood. Yet, we choose the one that collapse any time. And we work so hard for it. I hope that this upcoming summer break where so many of the young people listening to me now have time. So many of us have time on our hand that we'll do more. Take it from me. Don't take it from me. Take it from your Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Take advantage of five before five. And one of it, your free time, your youth, before you became older and became busy. Just think about it like this. It's a deposit. Whatever you do now, you deposit, you deposit, you deposit, you deposit. So when you grow older, you have so much in your deposit. Make sure that you take advantage of all programs that we offer here in the masjid and outside the masjid. Where you can learn the Quran, you can pray. Make sure that you bring your friends to the masjid more often. Make sure that you do, you know, listen to things that benefit you. Make sure that you improve your relationship with, the Quran, with, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Improve your relationship with the dhikr, the dhikr in the night and the morning. Improve your relationship with the salah. Improve your relationship with the dua. Ask Allah always to guide you. Ask Allah to protect you. Ask Allah SWT to open your heart. To bless you. Make sure that you, this is always be something that you ask, no matter how young you are or how old you are. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ij'alna wa min ahl al-jannah. قولوا ما سمعتم واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وبعد يقول أويس القادني رحمه الله لو أن رجلا مشى في طريقه لملاقاة عدوه فأثقله درعه فألقاه أويس القادني said imagine a person going to fight their enemy and on the way there, they felt like their armor was too heavy. 
So they took it off and they dropped. Then in their way, okay, they felt that their sword is also too heavy. So what they did, they threw that aside. And then even they felt that the food and the drink, the water that they carry is also heavy. So they take, they take the food and they dropped it and they take the water and they left it behind and continue. By the time they arrive to their enemy, they are thirsty, they are hungry, they are weak, they are defenseless, and they have no weapon to fight and nothing to protect them. That's right. He came face to face with the enemy defenselesses, weaponlesses, hungry. How could this person ever win the battle? The same applies to someone who find doing adhkar is too heavy. So you stop saying in them. Coming to the masjid is too hard. So you stop coming. Praying sunnah after salah, it is too much. So you stop praying it. They are constantly in doing, you know, constantly rubbing all these things. Find most religious obligations and commands are too hard, too heavy to, to keep up with. So they treat them lightly. At the same time, they complain about being in a bad situation. They having difficult life and feelings, shaitan influence over their hearts. And they feel that they can't fight the shaitan. Yeah, sure. Because like that man, when he met his enemy, he defendless, with swordless, with no food, no so weak, nothing to protect him. His, he, him, he have defeated himself or harmed himself before even his enemy harmed him. What unfortunate thing. The person has lost to themselves even before they could lose to their enemy. And that's the reality. So I hope that this example can be a good reminder for all of us. As we're taking this journey to Jannah, there is something in the way between us and the Jannah. Trying to push us away or to divert us. Willing to fight. Make sure that you're ready for that fight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala يعيننا وإياكم على الجنة وأن يعيننا وإياكم على الفوز بالفردوس الأعلى May Allah grant us the فردوس الأعلى May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our sins Forgive our sins And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who say the speech and follow the best and do the best of it Oh Allah forgive our parents, our family, our loved one and gather us with them in, in Jannat al-Naim اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا اللهم اغفر لنا ولآبائنا وأمهاتنا وإخواننا وللمؤمنين والمؤمنات اللهم لا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا اللهم إن نسلك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى آت نفوسنا والتقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت ووليها مولاها وصل اللهم وسلم على نبينا محمد وقوم للصلاة يرحمكم الله